We're just hours away from a moment that will go down in history. Former President Donald Trump will surrender at criminal court in Lower Manhattan after being indicted last week. The president will be read his rights and processed and possibly having his mugshot taken, but we believe that's not going to happen anymore. The indictment will be unsealed, revealing the charges against him. New York Congressman Richie Torres is joining us live this morning to weigh in on today's events. So good morning to you, Congressman. Thanks for being with us. Happy to be here. So curious, do you feel that Donald Trump's indictment has caused an even deeper rift in Congress along party lines? Uh, I, I suspect it's overstated because we're in a period of peak polarization of partisanship. Uh, so I thought partisanship was out of control even before the indictment of, uh, indictment of Donald Trump. You know, what I find outrageous is that there's been a concerted effort by House Republicans to intimidate Alvin Bragg and to interfere with an ongoing criminal investigation, which to me should be considered a violation of ethics, a violation of law. I've never seen members of Congress uh, use government power, government resources to obstruct justice mm. and to interfere with a criminal investigation. That crosses a line that we have not seen before. Yeah, and the DA has, has, has kind of fired back, right, saying he won't be intimidated. But would you open some sort of ethics investigation or send a letter? Should there be an investigation into members of Congress who you believe are interfering? Yes, and, and I mean, obviously, Republicans are in control of the House, so the Republican Party has more leverage. But in the future, we should seriously consider a rule that specifically prohibits members of Congress from interfering with an ongoing criminal investigation. Mm -hmm. uh, that, to me, violates separation of powers. We have no business injecting ourselves into law enforcement decisions of a district attorney. Well, let's talk about what it feels like in the city right now, yeah. the tensions super high right now, the city bracing for possible violence uh, during these protests that are expected. There's a lot of comparisons to what Trump was saying leading up to the January 6th riots. Um, but do you feel like anything like that could ever happen here in the city? Look, we're living in a time when political violence has become a new normal and nothing can be taken for granted. You know, Donald Trump has a long and ugly history of pouring gasoline on the fire. Um, you know, we saw him incite violence on January 6th in order to prevent his removal from power. And he's attempted to incite violence in order to prevent his criminal prosecution. But a few weeks ago, he called upon his supporters to, quote, take our nation back. He warned about potential death and destruction. And then you have rabble rousers like Marjorie Taylor Greene who are coming here to New York uh, simply to foment chaos. Uh, so I do worry about the security implications surrounding the trial. Yeah, and, and the NYPD says that, that all 35,000 members have put on notice. They are ready for anything. You just mentioned um, Marjorie Taylor Greene, right, leading this protest downtown today. In fact, she actually tweeted this, that New York City looks like Gotham City. Now, you replied saying, feel free to leave our beautiful city. Speaking of Gotham, you are not the Joker, but you are the joke. So what do you make, though, of somebody like a Marjorie Taylor Greene, right, coming to New York City? And do you have any further comment on, on that whole Twitter exchange? Look, this, the security situation is so delicate that it has to be managed carefully. And for Marjorie Taylor Greene to come here and to pour gasoline on the fire and potentially escalate tensions into violence, into disruption, I mean, that's behavior unbecoming of a member of Congress. As far as I'm concerned, she has no business being in Congress. Um, and this is just further proof that she's an irresponsible uh, demagogue. I mean, we've heard a lot from her a lot from Republicans, but very little from Democrats. Why do you think that is? Well, I think the view of Democrats is we have to be careful not to politicize what is fundamentally a legal process. The decision to indict Donald Trump was not made by politicians. It was made by a grand jury of his peers. Mm -hmm. And the indictment of Donald Trump sends a powerful message to the rest of the world that the United States is governed not by the rule of men, but by the rule of law, and that no one, not even a former president, is above the law. And that is precisely the right message to send to the world. The difference between a democracy and a dictatorship is that a democracy is capable of holding its own leadership accountable in a court of law. And we should allow that process to play out. Uh, certainly. Now, Congress currently on Easter break, right? Uh, so do you believe, though, that what we're seeing kind of play out here in lower Manhattan, this case against the former president, could be a big distraction to the order of business on Capitol Hill once you do return from the Easter recess? 
Uh, I mean, look, I, I mean, Republicans have been pursuing a whole host of kangaroo investigations into Hunter Biden, into the origins of COVID. Um, I think while Republicans have long been distracted, I can assure you that my Democratic colleagues and I are going to be focused on the bread and butter issues that matter to Americans. How do we create jobs? How do we lower costs? How do we address uh, the economic challenges that affect everyday people? Yeah, I'm sure constituents are hoping that everyone can remain focused. Congressman Richie Torres, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Appreciate it. Absolutely.